Hey guys, just a quick update from where I'm at at the end of today. I thought I'd actually start getting some wire in this uh, control cabinet, but instead I got it the back panel mounted inside the cabinet. I went ahead and drilled all the holes in the top of the cabinet for all the the cables and stuff that need to come into it. So that's done. I got my fan mounted. Um, I also got the motherboard mounted. You can see right here there was enough room perfectly to fit an ATX motherboard down the bottom there. That's going to work out just perfectly in the power supply. I'm going to use some industrial Velcro to just Velcro it down to the bottom of the cabinet. It should be just fine there. Um, you know, I kind of hem hot about putting the PC inside the control cabinet, but I think it's going to work out all right. One thing I want to do is figure out how to get a USB port to the outside or up to the operator's console. Um, operator's console is probably going to be the best. I might use a USB hub because I'm using a touch screen monitor um, and it's USB. And if I want a keyboard, I'll probably put it up there as well. So that's basically three devices, a USB keyboard, the touch screen monitor is USB, and if I want to use a USB memory stick to transfer uh, files back and forth, um, I'll need that. And if I want Wi-Fi um, to do any uh, team viewer sessions with Centroid if needed, although that's temporary, so I can always just plug in a USB, a Wi-Fi USB stick into a USB port and do what I need to do and then take it out. So that's where we're at at the end of uh, today. Gosh, I think all the holes are in it. Um, I'll go handheld and kind of take you around to uh, all the holes and the connections to the main cabinet. Um, let's see. Uh, one of the things when I was drilling the cabinet, obviously the back panel wasn't in there um, so that any uh, metal swore from the drilling the holes in the cabinet fell to the bottom of my vacuum ball out and until I was certain that I was done did I go ahead and put the entire back panel assembly in there so as to avoid getting any chips into the all-in-one DC that would be not good uh, metal chips on the circuit boards just don't work out well so uh, anyway let's go handheld and I'll kind of give you a quick walk around let you see what I've been up to today okay these two holes in the top of the cabinet one of them is for the spindle motor cable that goes up to the spindle motor. That'll drop in here. And the one in the back, I have a pneumatic valve on my uh, power draw bar. That valve, um, when the spindle is running, opens so that you cannot use the power draw bar while the spindle is running. So I will have to create uh, an output or get an output from the all one DC that when the spindle is running, that de-energizes or disables the use of the uh, power draw bar, draw bar. Let's see, this back one here is, this back hole right here is going to be for our operator push buttons. You'll see the flex conduit. That's going to that's gonna drop in right here. Uh, over here, there's power cables right above the drum switch. One's the 110 volt, the other one's the 240 volt circuit. And uh, I've got uh, screen mesh and my louver on, on my exhaust of my cabinet. I've got my 110 volt fan, it's uh, about 105 CFM. It's going to blow across there and hopefully give some cross ventilation. Um, I've also, I don't know if you can see, I sealed the keyholes in the back of the cabinet that came uh, pre-punched from the factory. I used aluminum uh, duct tape, uh, two layers to seal up all those holes. The idea here is that when the fan is running, it pressurizes the cabinet and keeps the dust out and it'll exhaust out that screened louver. The screen there incidentally is to keep any chips out, though I doubt any are going to get in there, but it's a just in case thing. Um, you just never know when you're blowing chips around, you might want to, might blow one up underneath the louver. So. Uh, that's where we're at. I'm very pleased that the motherboard fit inside the cabinet. And like I said, the power supply just uses industrial Velcro to Velcro it down. 
Um, the hard disk, I'll probably do the same thing. I'll just use uh, industrial Velcro and stick it to the, uh, the, the plate, maybe right here. I'll clean that plate really well first. I'm using a solid state drive so there's no platters, no, it's not a mechanical drive. So uh, anyway, that's where we're at. Um, I've also made up my my power cables. I don't know, you can see them there hanging on my vise. Yeah, with my cord caps and everything and strain reliefs to go into the, the top of the cabinet there just above the drum switch. So that's it for today. Um, I think I'm another step closer to getting ready to wire this thing up and uh, looking forward to making some progress on it. So, you know, all this work has to be done, so might as well just get it done out of the way on the front end uh, rather than fight it later after all the wiring is done. Talk to you guys later.